This series will attempt to predict and provide a wish list for Frontier's upcoming game Planet Zoo. We will go through a list of species and subspecies of various animals from different biomes and assess their likelihood to be added into the game based on uniqueness, popularity, conservation status and suitability as a zoo animal. Furthermore, I will assess their likelihood of inclusion with four categories. With expected, we can certainly expect this species in the game on release as it is too overwhelmingly popular to be left out. Likely candidates have a high chance of appearing and if not they could be likely DLC candidates. Possible species are the beginning of wishlist territory and some of these are interesting in their own right but perhaps not enough for inclusion. Unlikely candidates are dubious at best and one can expect none of these to be in the game. This series will not include the confirmed and inferred species already covered in a previous video. Be sure to watch the previous videos of this series to keep up to date with the entire wishlist and predictions. Today we explore the grasslands and shrublands of the world. Grasslands cover an estimated 26% of the world's surface and constitutes one of the largest biomes in area by our definition. Some of the key grasslands around the world include the Eurasian Steppe, the Patagonian Grasslands and the Great Plains of Midwestern North America. Shavolsky's Wild Horse is one of nature's Cinderella stories, declared extinct in the wild in 1966 and surviving only in captivity before successful reintroduction into parts of its historic range in the late 80s. Shavolsky's horse is now an endangered species but thriving in isolated pockets with little or no human activity in Mongolia and northern China. The Chernobyl exclusion zone in Eastern Europe hosts a small but growing population as well. Shavolsky's horse is considered the only true wild horse, having never been domesticated, living in small family groups in open steppe grasslands. With populations in zoos worldwide as well as extensive involvement in conservation programs, the Shavolsky's wild horse presents itself as an expected species to be introduced into Planet Zoo. Once ever present, roaming the American plains in great herds numbering some 60 million, the American bison was hunted to almost near extinction in the 19th century. A small resurgence in the mid 20th century due to conservation efforts have stabilized the bison in a few key national parks and reserves. The bison is the second largest land animal in the Americas, second only to the moose, and is the current national mammal of the United States, as well as having much sacred history with the Native American tribes. A broad and stocky animal that would complement large zoos very well, and as such its popularity makes it an expected addition to the roster. The Saiga antelope's historic range used to stretch from the British Isles into Alaska and the Canadian Yukon Territory. After excessive hunting for its horns beginning in the late 19th century brought it to the brink of extinction, the Saiga is still under severe threat despite recovery efforts due to its lucrative demand in Chinese medicine. The Saiga now exists in small pockets in Mongolia and dispersed areas around the Caspian and Kazakh steppes. The Saiga's prominent bloated nostrils make it a unique and much desired feature for zoos. It is a likely candidate for inclusion. The coyote is one of the hardiest and adaptable canine species, with an extensive range covering most of North and Central America. Smaller than wolves, the coyote is most prevalent over open grasslands with its major prey including prairie dogs, hares and jackrabbits, although coyotes will opportunistically hunt and eat most small prey. The coyote's range often intertwines with that of the grey wolf, although the latter generally hunts larger prey due to social pack hunting. Its success and adaptability renders little concern for conservation, however coyotes often come into conflict with humans due to livestock predation. Its addition into Planet Zoo is a possibility but not likely as it may not be appealing enough compared to other more deserving canine candidates. Bontabok were hunted to near extinction until the wild population numbered 17 individuals, before relocations into protected areas in South Africa has seen its spectacular recovery. The Bontabok, although now extinct in its natural range, is at present stage very abundant, a popular quarry for hunters with stock numbers easy to sustain. Bontabok live in the veiled habitats of South Africa, high altitude grasslands consisting of light shrubbery. Its similarity to other African antelope varieties and lack of popularity and abundance in zoos renders it an unlikely candidate for inclusion. Also known as the Indian antelope, the black buck is named for the male members of this species developing dark brown to black hides, adorning moderate corkscrew horns. The black buck enjoys grazing on low grasses in plains and thinly forested areas, 
native to the Indian subcontinent with some herds surviving in national parks in Nepal and Pakistan. It is however extinct in Bangladesh. Although declared of least concern by the IUCN, its population is on the decline due to poaching and habitat loss, especially as its lucrative grassland habitat is converted to agricultural land. The blackbuck is likely to make an appearance, representing an Asian variety of grassland antelope with reasonable uniqueness. The maned wolf is the largest canid variety in South America, and although resembling a fox, it is neither a fox nor wolf, but a genus of its own. Like the red fox, the maned wolf hunts alone and opportunistically, but its most distinguishing feature is its namesake dark furry mane, emanating from its neck. Prominent in grasslands in the Brazilian interior, it can also venture into lightly forested areas. Recently, habitat destruction, disease acquired from feral dogs, and minimal hunting has put the maned wolf population on alert, and it is considered close to being threatened. The maned wolf is only a possibility, but it does represent a somewhat uncommon specimen that appears in some zoos worldwide. Pronghorns are prevalent over North American prairies, and fill the same ecological niches as antelope in Africa and Asia, living in large herds over expansive ranges. It is a fundamental prey of many North American carnivora, such as wolves, coyotes and mountain lions. Despite its distinctive pronged horn, its actual closest relative is the giraffe in Africa, as it is neither a servine or a bovine. Previously pressured due to extensive hunting, pronghorn numbers have now recovered to the point where its imminent safety is of little concern, and it is featured in many zoos worldwide and thus a likely candidate. We now move on to shrublands, which are defined by biomes dominated by shrubs and bushes, dense undergrowth, open semi-arid areas that are between deserts and temperate forests. They are much drier than forest and woodlands to support dense foliage, but not as dry as deserts to be completely void of them. Australia is a continent covered with extensive shrubland, while some other notable examples include the Californian chaparral, the Mediterranean scrublands, and the South African finebos. The quokka is a small macropod marsupial that exists in a tiny area in southwestern Australia. Quokkas are known as the happiest animal on earth, and due to its non-fear of humans, often generally approachable, inquisitive and friendly, making them suitable zoo animals. However, it has suffered from extensive habitat loss due to its coastal shrubland ecosystems extending into urban development, and introduced predators such as cats, dogs and foxes have had major impact on numbers. Many quokkas thrive on offshore islands where no predators are present. Although its introduction would be pleasing, this is a fairly doubtful due to its minuscule size and lack of public awareness worldwide. The Nilgai, also known as the Blue Bull, are common in scrub forests and dry shrublands of India, and can be equated as the Indian equivalent of the wildebeest. Recently protected, the Nilgai had suffered from rampant hunting and habitat degradation due to agriculture, but its numbers are now quite large presently so large that they impede with crops and farms. Its lack of popularity won't do it any favours however, and it has a dubious chance of an appearance. Perhaps one of the more expected features is the red kangaroo, prevalent over the Australian shrubland and semi-arid grasslands that cover most of the continent. The red kangaroo is the largest mammal native to Australia, with male specimens displaying the prominent reddish tinge on their fur and it has been exported to display in many zoos worldwide due to the exoticness of such a creature. As such, this is an expected animal. Nevertheless, red kangaroos especially are in no real conservation danger. In fact, the opposite is true where they are now considered pests due to competition with farming land and there is now regulated hunting and poaching of its meat. The Hirola, also known as the hunter's antelope or hearter beast, is a critically endangered antelope that is found in two isolated pockets on the border of Kenya and Somalia. With numbers in sharp decline and currently none living in captivity, the Hirola is predicted to become extinct in the near future, and would be the first extinction of a mammal on mainland Africa in modern human history. With less than 500 individuals recorded, the Hirola survives in arid environments consisting of open grasslands with light bush and low shrubs, often on sandy soil. This makes it particularly sensitive to harsh droughts. Because of its rarity and lack of presence in zoos, the Hirola is a rather doubtful addition, but a conservation conscious roster may see the Hirola a possibility. Considered one of the rarest mammals in the world, 
The Northern Hairy Nosed Wombat historically ranged over much of Eastern Australia, but it is now restricted to a space of just 3 km squared within a national park. The Northern Hairy Nosed Wombat is one of three extant species of wombats, the other being the Southern Hairy Nose and the Common Wombat. Wombats dig extensive burrows in loose sandy soil or shrubland where they spend most of their time staying cool with the lower underground temperature before venturing out at night to feed. Perhaps due to their shy and reclusive nature, coupled with their extreme rarity, makes them lucrative animals for zoos and a likely feature for the Planet Zoo game. Radiated tortoises feature prominent star patterns on their carapaces, making them lucrative specimens on the pet trade. Over exploitation in this regard and poaching for food, coupled with habitat loss in its island home of Madagascar, has rendered this tortoise critically endangered. Radiated tortoises are popular zoo specimens due to their ornate design and long lifespans, often housed in small indoor enclosures, but there are many tortoise candidates that may outshine this species, but it is only a possibility. The Lace Monitor, also known as the Goanna in Australia, is one of the few options for reptilians that could be exhibited in open air enclosures due to their somewhat large size. Ravaging across the Australian scrubland, they willingly eat a wide range of prey and have been observed to opportunistically eat carrion and raid birds' nests for eggs. The room for monitor lizards is perhaps restricted in a game of this scale though, and thus their chance of inclusion is rather unlikely. Another iconic Australian marsupial, the Tasmanian Devil serves as a prime case of endangerment due to habitat loss and increased competition with introduced animals. Historically found all over Australia, the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world was eventually restricted to the island of Tasmania, hence its name. Known throughout as often displaying a ferocity and viciousness, the Tasmanian Devil's aggressive traits, social behaviour and active predation techniques has increased its demand for zoos and conservation in recent history, and we can expect a somewhat high possibility for this animal. The Numbat is an insectivorous marsupial that used to be widespread across Australia, now restricted to a few enclaves in southwestern Australia. It is however a striking creature and has been noted for its beauty and symbolism of fragile biodiversity. Because its diet almost entirely consists of termites, the Numbat is diurnal and thus prone to daylight predation from hawks, eagles and a plethora of terrestrial carnivores. Considered endangered, its sensitivity to environmental changes as a small animal makes imminent extinction very possible. However, due to its small size and rather inconspicuous status as a zoo animal, it is unlikely to make an appearance. Often considered as one of the rarest wild cat species in the world, the Iberian lynx was critically endangered and on the brink of extinction with only 100 individuals at the turn of the century, but recent conservation efforts have stabilised the population to around 300, and enough for the Iberian lynx to now be considered endangered. Living in open scrublands, the Iberian lynx persists on feeding off the European rabbit, which has fallen off due to intentionally introduced diseases to control the latter's population. The lynx displays low adaptability and has continued to persist on the same prey, about 75% of its food intake, and thus it is quite sensitive to changes in its prey numbers. The Iberian lynx would pose as a very likely addition to the game. Like the radiator tortoise, the Indian star tortoise's temperament and fascinating carapace unfortunately contributes to over-exploitation in the exotic pet trade, and thus a vulnerable creature. Popularity aside, its size may be troublesome, although it is large enough to be displayed in open-air exhibits. Ultimately, it is an unlikely inclusion and I feel reptiles in general will have lower overall priority. Another common presence on the shrublands of Australia is the flightless bird emu, the second largest bird in the world after the ostrich. Generally social, emus are notorious for sustaining themselves with variable food sources, subsisting on a diet consisting of vegetation, grasses, seeds, and even insects and arthropods as the seasons permit. As such, they are one of Australia's most successful animals, with a distribution range over most of the continent. Emus would be a popular and readily accepted addition for the Planet Zoo game, but they would always suffer from second place syndrome behind the larger and more famous ostrich, so although likely, probably not definite. 
Although there were many rock wallaby species to choose from, the yellow-footed rock wallaby is a prime example of benefiting from an effective conservation model, having previously been endangered. Rock wallabies are smaller macropods that reside in the scrublands on rougher terrain and rock outcroppings where they can evade predators due to their agility and serve as popular zoo animals in low footprint enclosures and with their docile nature. However, they will definitely be outshined by the larger and more distinct kangaroos and are dubious at best for inclusion. That ends our predictions and wish lists for these biomes. Vote in the poll for the next biome selection and subscribe for the next video as we await the release of Planet Zoo. Catch you guys later.